Hi there folks, uh, here we are in Linden, Washington, um, that's Western Washington in the US, to you uh, viewers in the, in the UK and far afield. We have Lauren Cunningham, Cunningham here, the founder of YWAM, Youth with a Mission, and Lauren kindly came over to Linden today to um, encourage the new YWAM base here in Linden, which has been very exciting, it's been very tiring but very fruitful day. And um, Lauren's got a few words to encourage the Full Gospel Businessmen's uh, listeners. And uh, I'm just going to pass it over to Lauren to say a few words to encourage you men. Thank you, Andrew. I just want to say to all of you that the Full Gospel Businessmen's movement has had a tremendous impact around the world. Let me give you some examples, and then I'll talk something about the Genesis. But out in China, it was just following the death of Mao Zedong, the new premier. He wanted to learn about free market because he became a champion for that for the nation of China. And five full gospel businessmen went to meet with him. And after they talked to him about business and how it works and so on, one of them said to him, just as they were closing, why do you communists fear the Bible? The premier laughed. He says, we don't fear the Bible, it's only a book. He said, okay, well let us, we'll pay for it, set up printing presses in your country and legally print a million Bibles in Chinese. He laughed again. He says, a million is nothing. And so we had two of our printers working in Germany. They joined up with some other printers from other groups and went to China and the Full Gospel Businessmen financed that setup. They began to print the Bible in China, in Chinese, and began to, through the Christians, began to distribute it. And as it continued, no one was counting, well we counted, and they, they kept on counting. And last April, I was with a, not this last April, but a year and a half ago, I was with one of the printers who had been there decades, and Peter Dean is his name, and he's from Tehranga, New Zealand. And one of our others was King from Colorado Springs, Colorado. And so he showed me the 100 million Bible that they printed. Because the government let it go and didn't stop. New premiers, they knew the first premier had said so. And they just kept going, 100 million. And that was because of five businessmen who were full gospel businessmen were willing to be used for God to get the Bible out in China. A hundred million Bibles legally spread throughout the nation. Now, what else are you doing? Well, you, you get a businessman because businessmen can win businessmen. But I look back to the Genesis uh, Demas Shikarian was a friend of my father, T.C. Cunningham. I went, went with my dad when I was eight years old to Demas' home when he lived in La Puente, California, and are uh, right near there, and, uh, and later moved up north. But uh, they were friends right from the beginning. Well, Richard and I, when I was about 22, Richard was a couple of three years younger than me, we worked together with another young leader and we filled the Shrine Auditorium preaching the gospel to young people, teenagers, and that was thousands of them. And we worked together because Richard was a great winner of souls and that's what he loved to do even as a teenager. And so I see the beginnings where Demas was emphasizing not only salvation, but the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the important role that the Holy Spirit plays because the Holy Spirit opens up opportunities for you that you can't open for yourself. You can't just do it like business. It's something that even your business, as God gives you inspiration, can do things that you couldn't do on your own. You do the possible, God does the impossible. So I've watched around the world I was just recently, this is in the month of June, no, May of this year, 
I was out in Trinidad and I met there with the leaders and their people and they had brought in much more. And I saw how they were touching the nation's leadership, not only in the marketplace, but also in the political place. And that's something that businessmen can do if they are wise, if they are anointed of the Spirit. And salvation is like measles. You can't give it unless you've got it. And there's something about the, the sharing of the gospel, which I learned from my parents. When I was three years old and my sister five, we were every week on the streets evangelizing. And our role was, as kids, we would sing and the crowds would come and then the gospel was preached. So by the time I was six, I got to know the Lord in a personal way for myself, not just borrowed way. Some say, well, you can't do that so young. Well, I had the advantage of living every day with godly parents that put Jesus first in every part of our lives. They were church planters in the hardest places on earth. And as they continued, that went to the international. Dad and mom preached and ministered in 140 countries, and he helped to raise millions and millions of dollars for missionary support around the world. He became known as Mr. Missions in his elderly years. Died, both of them in their 90s, prayed every day of my life. By the time I was six, I had not only met the Lord, but I began to win others of, of my age. And that's what God wants us to do. But when I was 10, I won a businessman to the Lord. And he, he said to me years later, he had had a stroke, and now he was ready to meet his maker. And he said, Lauren, I'm so glad that as a little boy of 10, you wouldn't let me go until I gave my heart to Jesus. So this can happen at any age, but usually it happens with those of our age. So when I was 17, I was in Mexico, para predicar el Evangelio. I was speaking the gospel in my broken Spanish with 11 other guys, and we began to see people saved, especially the young people, our own age. So as businessmen, you can reach those people that are in the business world like a pastor or a missionary cannot do. You have the opportunity to lead them to Christ, not by thumping a Bible on their head, but by living the life and being the Bible to them and being Jesus to them in, in ways that you will know how to do. But the Holy Spirit will add to you, add to you new things. When the Holy Spirit comes, He comes and anoints you to do things beyond your own capabilities. You can do the possible, but He can do the impossible. And together, you do things that you can never imagine possible. So I've, I've met with the, and spoken to uh, full gospel businessmen in, in Asia, in Africa, and all over the world. To keep up the work, only pass it on to the next generation, and let the next generation come up, feel the same excitement that you felt when you first began walking this way and give them Jesus and give them the Holy Spirit's anointing and understanding and infilling, but also give them the Bible so that they will understand they're anchored in something that will last throughout their entire life, but go beyond into the third and fourth generation. God bless you, keep up the good work. That's my, my statement to all of you and my encouragement because you're doing uh, a part of a movement that is a great part that the world needs. God bless you. Thank you, Lauren. Bless your heart. And God bless you, Andrew. Cheers. Good stuff.